music producers. It's Curtis King, CurtisKingBeats.com, and as promised, I am finally going to show you the first part of how to put together your audio visualizer, audio spectrum background, which is pretty much a Photoshop tutorial right after this break. Music producers, as you can see, we are now in Photoshop. Doesn't really matter what version of Photoshop you have. Everyone pretty much follows the same process. So first things first, you wanna go to File, New. You wanna make sure that you follow these exact measurements. 1920 by 1080, which is of course gonna be the quality of your video anyways. Resolution, we're gonna go to 200 on this. And then after that, we're gonna go ahead and push Create. Now that we have that here, I'm gonna actually drag that up here so it's in the main window. Now that we have this here, we need to go ahead and grab the images we're gonna use for this. The first one being the background. Now it's really ideal if you find a background that is already 1920 by 1080p. It'll make your life so much easier. If you're going to use something that's a different size, just make sure that it's something that's bigger. You don't want to go ahead and stretch out a small image to a large image because it's going to look hideous and things are going to look pixelated and everything is just not going to look right. So first things first, take this image. You want to make sure you click up here to the move tool, drag it here. And please keep in mind, I know there's easier ways to do some of these things that I'm doing, but I've been using it a certain way for so long and it just works for me. Okay, once that's centered, we're getting ready to start for our next section, which is we wanna grab the image we're gonna turn into a PNG. A PNG is basically, usually it's an image without a background. It's like an image with a transparent background. So we're gonna grab this Killmonger picture and we're going to do a little editing to this first before we do that. So let's check the image size. Right now it's 3000 by 2000, which is a whole lot more than we need. So what we're gonna do is actually make it smaller. I'm not sure if this actually changes anything in terms of the resolution when you do that here, but always change that first and then change the size afterwards. We're gonna make it smaller. So we wanna make it relative to what the other one is, which is 1920 by 1080p. So let's say, let's just make this a 900. That should be good for now. Now we're gonna zoom in. And you can do that pushing control and the plus sign if you're using a PC. Grab this eraser tool, right click it, and go to magic eraser tool. So the reason why we grab an eraser, we're gonna get rid of the background here so that we can manipulate it in the other file. Now, before we do that, I like to create like sort of a rough draft copy of the background image, just in case we mess up. Once I do that, I click here on the eyeball to get rid of the background. Go here, then we're gonna use this magic eraser tool and look at the tolerance is set to 32. Boom. Slowly but surely, we're getting rid of that background. Okay. Now that we have that, go ahead and click the move tool, grab this entire menu, pull it out. Just so you can see the other menu, grab it and drag it here to the middle. Now we actually got lucky because it's a pretty good size. And I think I want to keep that there right there in the middle. In other versions of Photoshop, you're able to just grab the image and kind of go. But sometimes when you grab images here, it'll grab the background instead. So push control T. Take that to the center. The new Photoshop comes with some parameters that show you how much in the center it is. So you see right there, we have the plus sign. Now that we have that, we wanna create a circle behind that. So the way that we do that, we go here to the shape tool, okay? Right click it. And then we're going to use the ellipse tool, which is basically a circle. We hold down the left click on the mouse and we just create a circle. Now, the circle's not perfect. So the way that I do it to make sure that it's a perfect circle, at least that it's parallel to each other, is I basically go to the corner, I hold down the shift key. This is make sure that I get a perfect circle, okay? Now, I kinda wanna make sure that the picture underneath it kind of bleeds out of the circle, and I'm gonna show you why in a second. Now, obviously, we don't want this to be pink. <laughs> so if you wanna change that, we can change that to whatever color you want it to be. I typically like to make the color sort of one of the colors that I'm using in the image. So maybe this gold. And we gotta make sure we're on the right setting on the blend mode, normal, cool. So now that we have that, the reason why this circle is on top of it is because here is sort of like, almost like when we're mixing the beat, it's a certain chain that you create and whatever layers on top is obviously gonna be the top layer. So what you wanna do is drag that underneath the other PNG and then you wanna move the circle 
to be behind that. So it's almost like a sunset behind it. So I push control T since we're on that layer. And then boom. Now it's looking good. Only issue we're having right now is it's bleeding here. So what I would do, I want it to bleed even more. So I'm gonna grab this and we're gonna get rid of all this excess underneath the circle. So the process to get rid of all this excess, really simple. All we gotta do is just use this circle as sort of the parameters that we're gonna set for this one. The way that we do that, click on the circle, hold down control on your keyboard, and then click here right on the circle. Boom, now it's highlighted. Next thing you wanna do, click here to the rectangular marquee tool, boom, and then right click select inverse what that did is selected pretty much the opposite of what the circle is so everything else outside the circle is now being highlighted once we have that here go over here to the killmonger picture and then press delete now everything that was excess around that circle has been deleted the next thing that we want to do is probably add some text we're going to keep this one pretty simplistic i'm going to look for sort of a cursive text that i use on occasion so this one, I'm gonna change the color to probably black. I think black would be good to be in there. And we're gonna put Killmonger on top of this. Okay, drag that over here. Make it even smaller, just because it's bleeding a little bit on the picture. Boom, now you got the name there. Now, say for instance, we wanna put our producer name underneath here. So what I would do, I would use this section down here to create some text. Let's put Curtis King Beats. This looks good stylistically up here, but I wanna make sure that people see my name and that it's really clear. So I'm gonna use a font that I always kinda go back and forth to, boom. So then now people know exactly where this is coming from. Now I would like to have that pop, so what I would probably end up doing is double clicking and highlighting it, grabbing that color, and then what I'm gonna do is actually create some kind of a background behind this just so that it highlights even more. So I'm drag it down a little bit. We're gonna go right back here to the tool option, create a rectangular tool this time, okay? Grab the corner and basically just go over the text like this. Once again, we're gonna drag it behind the text. Let's zoom in. Now, if you wanna grab both the background plus your name, hold down the control key plus that and just drag them down together. You wanna leave a little space so that when the audio spectrum goes around that, it's not crowding over the top of your name. That's very important. Now say for instance, you have a logo, super easy. Just go in and open that up. I think I use my PNG one. It makes your life easier when you use one that actually has no background. So then I take a piece of that, I drag it over. And as you see, it's way too big right now. So then I need to go ahead and push control T Hold down shift, just to make sure that it doesn't get stretched in the wrong resolution. Now, right now, we're having issues with the logo because it's a black font and we can barely see it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna change it to white. What you do to make it go white, double click on here, and then go to color overlay. Actually, that yellow doesn't look too bad, but if we go to white, now it's coming a little bit clearer. Let's put a drop shadow on it. Okay, blend mode to normal, opacity. Now it's popping out a little bit more. I even might even make this a little bit smaller just because stylistically I want it to look. Now the only issue I'm seeing right now is that this circle is not lined up. It's not looking too parallel. And most of the process you're doing is gonna be making sure these things are lined up. So I'm gonna grab all the different elements that make up this circle, which is this circle, the picture, and then the Killmonger text and then center it and see it gives you some guides here, the pink guides that let you know. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna separate both elements, which is the background image and then the circle PNG image. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna get rid of the things in the background. First and foremost is to get rid of the background and the other background, which is the white. Click file and then save. And we're gonna save this one as a PNG. Very important because it won't be a transparent background if you don't do that, all right? So once we do that, we make the background visible again and then get rid of the other circle elements in the middle, including the logo. Now all we have is the background. Now, an easier way to do that would just be to right click and then show hide all other layers. 
and just show that later. That's the easiest way to do it, but I did it manually, whatever. So go ahead and save this one. You wanna save this one, not as a PNG, but as a JPEG and then save that. Now let's open up FL Studio and see what it looks like. So here we are at the Z Game Visualizer. Let's go ahead and test it out and see what it looks like. Boom, we added both of the elements and let's go ahead and run through the process that I showed you last time and just basically see how it's looking. So boom, there you go. Now, if you wanna learn how to do the audio spectrum that I did in my last video, just go ahead and check it out right there. Now you can go ahead and design it however you like, but that's the way that I do my process. Once again, this is Curtis King and CurtisKingBeats.com. Peace. Please subscribe to the channel below, CurtisKingCurtisKingBeats.com.